Hi, Boss Broyles here. Today we are going to talk about the steps of how to make an origami crane. Uh, origami is the Japanese art of paper folding and the origami crane is one of the simpler yet sophisticated uh, patterns to make. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do this today. I am actually using a piece of origami paper. This happens to be, uh, in Japanese, it's called washi uh, for paper. And my paper happens to be colored white on one side and colored blue on the other. What I have given you, uh, or what you might have, is a piece of blank white paper. And in order to take a piece of blank white paper and make it into a square, you're gonna fold the paper. Do, 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 do. And proper techniques of folding paper, let's just start talking about them right now. I'm gonna line up the edges here. I'm gonna look at the corner here. I'm gonna pinch the corner. I'm gonna line up that edge. I'm gonna pull my finger down to make a kind of a bend in the paper. I'm gonna pull my finger to the right, pull my finger to the left, okay? And I'm gonna make a nice crease. Verify that the point is pointy and that this side is straight. Then I can fold down the top here, verify that the fold went all the way down. Sometimes I like to fold backwards like this. Do, 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 do. And this is how you make a square piece of paper. So I'm gonna end up using my scissors. I'm gonna cut along this line carefully, straightly. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. And then now I have a square piece of paper. All right. Um, what I've asked you guys to do. Uh, with this to kind of help us um, be in the present and be in the now is we're gonna take our white sheet of paper and on the inside, uh, I want you to take five minutes and I want you to write uh, a description of how you are feeling right now in this moment that you are making this crane. So it doesn't have to be feelings, it could be describe what you see. So I see, I hear, I taste, I feel. And feel could be like, what tactilely do you feel? I feel the, the cold metal of my pencil. I feel the ground beneath my feet. I feel the sweat of my uh, feet, which is too much information. Anyway, it could also be, I feel, um, what do you feel on the inside? What are these uh, thoughts? How are you right now in this present moment? So inside this crane, you can write in any language. You can write anything you want. You can even draw if you like. You can even use some mark making to kind of express some of the feelings. But I want you to kind of capture what is going on right now, right now. Take as long as you need to be in the present. I'm not gonna actually write stuff here because this is a demo, but I would write all of these things here. No one's going to read this. It's going to get folded up and it will be on the inside of our crane. Okay, what we're gonna do with these cranes after is we're gonna string them all together and then all of our present feelings and thoughts and descriptions are gonna kind of sway and build community together to kind of bring us back together as a River Home Link community. So at the very end, so that we don't waste paper, uh, we're gonna take these um, and we're gonna blend them up and we're gonna make, make new paper out of all of these cranes and thoughts and feelings um, to gift. All right, so I've got this done. Now I'm ready to start my instructions. All right, there are 
two ways to start an origami crane. Uh, I'll show you my favorite way first and then I'll show you a different way. What I like to do is I keep the top in a square, not a diamond, but I'm gonna start with a square and I'm gonna fold the top down to be a rectangle. Again, line up your corners, watch your edges. I'm gonna hold my finger here, come down, make that crease, and then I'm gonna push this way and I'm gonna push this way. I'm checking my corners, checking my edges. The true art of origami is the exactness of your folds will pay off in the end. All right, so now I have a rectangle. I have the opening or the mouth facing my belly, okay? My belly's here. My words are still talking to me. I'm gonna take this top edge here and I'm gonna fold this top edge into the middle. You can also think of it as I'm gonna take this side edge here and I'm gonna fold this side edge down to the bottom. So if I'm looking at the bottom here, the side went to the bottom, I'm gonna look at my corner, make sure I get my corner nice and cornered. Okay, line up my edge here. Again, pull down to the middle, pull down this way, push up this way, okay? Go over your folds, make the creases really nice. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over. When you are looking at origami instructions, when you see this symbol, if you can see that, whoops, that means flip over. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna do the same thing. This side is gonna go to this bottom. Do, 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 do. Watch your corner, watch your edge, pull to the middle, crease, crease. So now I've gone from a square to a rectangle, now to a triangle. Here's the tricky part, but I have a way to make it really easy for you. If you notice, I have a top fold, I have the hole in the middle, and I have a bottom fold. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm gonna put my finger inside the hole and I'm gonna push down on the bottom fold. So here and here, with my other finger, with these little pinchers, I'm going to put my thumb inside the hole and I'm gonna pinch the top flap, okay? So finger down, thumb and pincher up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my hand straight up and then I'm gonna pull it over to the right. And what's gonna happen is, it's going to flip this back into a square, okay? I got some little paper bubbles up here. Sometimes you just need to go and push on them a little bit so that they refold along the same lines. Okay, I'm gonna do that again real quick. So I had, doo -doo -doo -doo, I was here. Fold down, flip, fold down, this is the tricky part. Hold your finger inside the hole. Hold that bottom flap. I'm gonna grab the top two, okay? I'm gonna lift, oh, I'm gonna switch my fingers, this one and this one. I'm gonna lift up and pull over to the right, okay? Up and to the right, and you're gonna form a square. This square has, um, a square on top, a layer one. It's got two little legs in here and then the bottom layer. That's our square. Ta-da! There's instructions that take you through this method. This is called the crane base. But there's instructions that say make a diamond. Do -do -do -do. So fold down from the top to here. Make a diamond. Then it says make a smaller rectangle. Okay, and then it wants you to take one of these rectangles and you push it down to form the square, flip it, 
take this rectangle, you can see it has a big hole in it, push that down and make a square. This method never worked really that great for me, but that's why I do. I mean, it works, it works. Find what works for you. This one goes forward, back. There we go. All right, so that is the first part of the crane base. Yay! I've moved this around so much. I wanna verify that this crane is facing my belly, that it can talk to me. So the mouth, blah, 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 is facing my belly. What I'm gonna do next is prepare for my petal fold. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bottom edge, notice there's two layers here. I'm gonna take this bottom edge and I'm gonna fold this bottom edge to the center of my square. So it's gonna end up looking kind of like a kite. So I'm gonna, again, watch my corners down here on the bottom. Whoops. Just fold one layer up. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Just the top layer, I'm gonna fold it up. Watch my corners, fold that up, all right? Now I'm gonna turn it over and do the same on the other side. Flip it over. Do it this way. Take this edge, match it to the middle, watch your corners. And fold that up. So now I have this little kite. All right, the next step I'm gonna do is kind of a step in preparation. What I wanna do is I wanna take this top piece, this top triangle here, and I'm gonna fold it along this line. So I'm gonna fold down. Okay, I don't wanna crease my little kite. I wanna fold this down and I'm gonna put a really good crease right here. Okay, push, 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 push. I'm gonna lift this. Okay, this is tricky, pay attention. I'm gonna lift this part. I'm gonna open the kite. So I'm gonna open this one. I'm gonna open this one. And if you notice, what we've done is we've created like a hinge, like a door hinge. This is going to bend along this top line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up from the bottom where the mouth is, I'm gonna pick up one layer. So when I pick up the top layer, it's going to open up, and if you notice, it's bending along that top hinge. I'm gonna open it up. It's going to refold. So I'm gonna hold it down here. I'm gonna open this up. You can start seeing it form. And sometimes I'll start at the bottom. I'm gonna watch my corners. It's gonna fold right along those same lines. And then this one's always gonna get some paper bubbles up here. Sometimes I like to just go up to the top. I'm gonna fold that top in along the folds that were already there. And then when I lay this flat, it's going to help me because it's just, I'm not making new crease lines, I'm just reverse Ooh. folding or folding back on the folds that were already there. All right? So I'll show you again on the other side because you're gonna flip it over. Fold the top down, make that hinge. So fold the top down, open it back up, open, open. I'm gonna take the top layer, sometimes I like to hold this down, take the top layer, I'm gonna open it up. Don't pull too hard because you want that fold to stay folded. Open it up, flatten it out. It's easier to flatten the bottom. And again, see that little paper bubble? Just pop your finger in there Start refolding the top corner. We always worry about the corners. There we go. And then fold that flat. Whew! That petal fold is tough, but it's beautiful. So I have the petal fold on both sides. I wanna keep these little legs. I wanna keep them facing my belly, so he can walk along, but um, keep the legs facing your belly. 
If you notice, there's two layers on the side. I'm gonna pick up one layer and I'm gonna take this edge here and I'm gonna fold it into the center line. So it's like the kite again. Uh, this one's gonna make smaller legs. So I'm gonna fold this edge here into the center. I'm gonna watch my corners. I didn't pay, there we go. And get this to be a nice thin leg. And you're gonna do the same thing on all four sides. So again, this edge here folds into the middle line. So fold that in. Do, do, do. Ta-da! And then I'm gonna turn it over. You'll see it a little bit better on this side because you won't have the blue showing. This edge here, fold in to the inside. Ta-da! This edge here, fold to the inside line. Watch your quarters. Good creases. All right. I still have two legs. They're still facing my belly. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create the head and the tail. If you notice, there is a diagonal line up here on the side of the body. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these legs and I'm gonna fold it up. There's a part up here where I can't pull any further, okay? It's where the body starts. So I'm gonna kind of pull the leg until I find that little spot. And then if you notice, I'm not folding it straight up because then our head won't show. We want our head to show. So this edge here is gonna line up with this edge here. So line up that edge and push down. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with this leg. This edge here is gonna meet this edge here. So lift and fold up. Push down on these folds. All right, we're almost done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a book fold. I don't know if it's called a book fold, but I like to think of it as a book fold. It's a reverse fold, really. I'm gonna let the leg down. I'm gonna think about this as a page in a book. I'm gonna open the book, okay? Open the book, and I'm gonna fold this back up. Notice when I fold this back up, do -do -do -do, and close the book page, I'm actually refolding this fold back on itself. So it's gonna fold here, and then this top part folds back on itself. Okay, maybe I'll make that side the head because it didn't quite fold very well. It goes up along this edge. So let me try this again on this side. Lower the leg, open the book, you can see where there's a crease line right here. That's the line that is gonna get folded up. And then you're gonna close the book, but make sure that these edges are still together. You don't want the tail up here. The tail goes out psh, along that diagonal. All right, so this happens to me all the time. I have one that refolded really good I'm gonna keep that as the tail. Uh, this one, uh, this fold didn't reverse very well because maybe my sides were off, but that's okay because I'm gonna make this into the head. To make the head, I'm just gonna fold down. Do -do -do -do. Fold down, okay, I'll do it on the paper. To make a crease, there's the head. Okay, this last part is a little tricky. It's one of those kind of book folds or reverse folds. So I folded it down to get that crease. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna open up the head from the neck. 
I'm going to push down, push down the top of the head. And then when I pinch it closed, if you notice, there's a tiny little triangle that's forming in there. So you're going to reverse the head, squish the head down. Now I have my crane. I can either just take it and pull my wings down if I want. I can also take and pop the inside. I like to take my thumbs and put my thumbs straight across the top here. I take my bottom finger and I put my bottom finger along the bottom of the wing. So my fingers are kind of doing this. This is, my pointer finger is supporting the bottom. My thumb is supporting the top. So if I do that on both sides, then if I carefully pull out a little bit. So I'm kind of doing this with my hands. It's going to open up the body here. And then using my fingers, I can kind of twirl down the wings and the wings will help it stand up. Yay! So now I have a crane uh, with my present moment on the inside. Uh, if you want to make these at home, please do. There's lots of materials that you can make cranes with. Uh, I sometimes make them out of things I get in the mail. Uh, sometimes I make them out of to-go menus from restaurants when I'm sitting there. Uh, sometimes I make them out of newspaper. Um, uh, and sometimes I make them out of recycled worksheets or things that I've printed that I don't need anymore. Uh, I would encourage you to do the writing exercise or the drawing exercise on the interior as it's good for your soul. And if you would like to contribute these plus others to the River Homelink community project, uh, you can put your cranes in the mailbox by the front of the school. Um, if you're making these in my class, you can leave them in the bin on the supply table. All right, uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for making cranes with us. Okay, bye.